everyone, my name is Alice. Welcome to my YouTube channel, especially if you are new. This video is going to be all about the 12 books that I read in March 2021. Most of them have been returned to the library now, but I've got a few of them here to show you. Um, yeah, so I finished the 12th one again this morning and it's now the 31st of March. So I thought it would be good to film this and get this up onto YouTube. Um, so I'll just get started. The first book that I read was by Catherine Gray and it was The Unexpected Joy of the Ordinary. So I've read the one about The Unexpected Joy of Being Sober and also The Unexpected Joy of Being Single and I did quite enjoy those, especially the single one. But this Ordinary one was really not good. I rated it half a star. I wouldn't recommend it. It was very repetitive. And it's mostly just saying things you already knew. Like she is very well known, and she, so she has got some positive reviews. But I did not like the book. So yes, yeah, so that's been returned to the library. I would not recommend it. Um, the second book I read was also a self-help book. I was going down this sort of genre as a theme for this month. So it was by Russell, and it is called The Year of Living Danishly. It has. I rated it three and a half stars and it was quite famous a few years ago so it was written in 2016 it's all about this woman that her husband gets a job at Lego so they move to Denmark and she lives there for a year um, she can't speak the language but she's got to work out how to live like them so they do certain things that are very different to the culture here so she, she originally lived in London so it's interesting to see how she tries to make herself happier because Denmark is always at the top for the world's happiest country so in each month of the year, so there's 12 chapters she goes and investigates something, so it's food or extracurricular activities or um, design, well designed furniture things like that, or and time outside yeah, so it's really interesting to see and I would recommend that. The third book that I read was by Dara McAnulty, who lives in Northern Ireland, and it is called A Diary of a Young Naturalist. I would rate this two stars. I didn't really enjoy it. I'm not really into the whole descriptive language. And I think he was a bit picky. Like he was saying he hates it because he once saw someone cutting their lawn with a pair of scissors to make sure the edges were straight and he's saying that's awful because they're not letting biodiversity grow and I was thinking that's a bit opinionated because if someone wants to cut their lawn with scissors you should let them it's got nothing to do with you really and it, it was just too descriptive it was interesting but not really the next book I read was actually a fiction so I needed a rest from reading all this non-fiction so it's just my luck, and I bought it in Tesco's, they do that deal, two for eight pounds. So it's about a family and they win, yeah, 17.8 million pounds is how much they win. And they were originally in a cynic date with two other couples. So it's interesting to see what happens and how their lives fall apart. So she has very different ideas of how the money should be spent compared to her husband, who's turned into more of a spendthrift. Uh, it's quite an easy read. I rate it three stars. The next book is a 2019 non-fiction book called Eat It Anyway. I saw it on social media a lot and I rated it three stars. Most of it was things you've already heard but it was interesting to have a refresher. So it was written by two girls that had previously suffered eating disorders um, and been quite unhealthy. So it was interesting for them to say no to diet culture and exercise and talk in quite a candid way about that. The next book is a 2020 book called Designing Your Work Life. I rated it three stars. I don't know, it's just a bit repetitive because they're kind of things you already know. Just because I was on the self-help book genre route this week, this month, that's why I ended up reading it. Um, I can't remember what I took away from it, which isn't good. 
I think about having mean, meaningful work and making sure you're not wasting time and things like that. The next book that I read was called Risk and it's all about the science and politics of fear. I rated it three stars. Um, yeah, it was interesting because there were different sections like after the Twin Towers were blown up and 3,000 people died, then the in the next few years an extra 1,500 people died in road accidents because people were flying less. So I was looking at the relative risk of things and how people focus on what their gut says rather than how their rational mind would consider things to happen. So even if there was a terrorist attack, a large terrorist attack every single day, it would still affect a very small portion of the country or the world. But it's changed how we live our lives very drastically. And the shame, same with things like childhood abduction and diseases cancer they focus on what are normal people to make the reader more emotional especially in the media yeah i would recommend that it was a good book it's just very long to read just lots of facts and references but that's good in a book like that the next book i read is was quite an old book from 1988 it's called fasting girls and it's all about the history of anorexia and how People, even in the Middle Ages, used to starve, but it was seen as more of a saint thing to do and a religious thing to do, particularly with Catholics. Um, or like just being able to live off prayer rather than actual food or water. I don't know, there's this interesting case where the doctors went to observe this girl who said she hadn't eaten for years and then she died ten days later just from starvation. Yeah, I did, I really like that book. It was really interesting to see the development of the disease and how it's changed and now how it's more common in middle class families. The next one was a reread. I read it last year and I read it again this year. Why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. So it's all about black lives and how people are racist by not thinking about race. They need to recognise their white prejudice and so that as a white person you've got benefits even if you're not trying to be racist. Yeah, it's good, it's good like starter points but it's very opinionated and not always weighed up equally with the different sides of the argument. The next book is called Educated by Tara Westover. It's a non-fiction autobiographical autobiography sort of book and I read it last year, it was my favourite book last year I think. So. I would highly recommend it, it's very good. Yeah, so she grew up with a very religious Mormon family in a household where there was a lot of violence and her brothers were sometimes nasty to her, which it shows how the power of education has enabled her to change her life. I don't know, it's just the descriptions and seeing what's happened in her life. I really enjoy, I really enjoy that book. Uh, next book I have here it's Haynes Explains Pets Worsh Owner Worship Manual. I rated this two stars. I knew it was going to be a silly book, but it was only 35 pages, so it took me about half an hour to read. It is funny in some bits, but it's just a bit silly. So it's like a 20, 20 point quiz to see if you think you're a cat lady. Um, different words for different things, talk about famous dogs, what dogging, dogging is, all about Lassie and Toto, mm, two, two stars for that one. And then the final book that I read this month was Lost Connections and I rated this four and a half stars. It's all about depression so there's some research has found out that it's not serotonin that causes depression so maybe drugs and the biological route isn't the best route and how connecting with people in society and your environment can be a beneficial way to help depression because maybe it's not your mind that's the problem, it's society that's the issue thank you for watching, that's the end of this video if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and bye